Do we need an access to enough uh, different strains in healthcare systems? You would want to be treating cancer with a, a high sativa. You want to treat it with a high indica uh, because of the terpene profile. Uh, the indica will contain more, more myrcene, uh, whereas sativa will contain more limonene. Um, and, and it's all synergy and an image called the entourage effect that shows different cannabinoids and terpenoids working together for various illnesses all in one big disc. It's quite useful, that uh, image. There are cannabinoids, terpenoids, flavonoids in the plant <clears throat> that can be categorized for a specific illness. They're not synthetics by any means, but um, you could group strains that should be good for treating cancer, other strains good for chronic pain, and I could point out which strains would be the best, but they're all a mixture of so many different compounds. But I could group strains, but strain effect is indeed important. Um, maybe more for the psychological illness rather than the physiological illness. Mm -hmm. uh, because terpenes will affect psychology as well. Cannabis users always say you have to smell the cannabis flower and you know which one is the right for you. Yeah. yeah. And if you have an illness, if you grow your own plants, they will grow a terpenoid profile and cannabinoids to help you with your illness. Mm -hmm. This is intent. It's never considered as the first option. Do you think it could be the other way around in the future? I would like to see it the other way around. Um, yeah, it's served up in the dying days because it's a last resort medicine, but you, out of that comes a number of miracles, too. In, in my simple mind, you could treat virtually every physiological illness using some form of cannabis. And you could treat all psychological illness using psychedelic medicines. This is a very basic natural medicine approach. Mm -hmm. But the compounds that are involved in that, in those processes are really the basic medicine and that's all you need. I went to a lecture by Raphael Mershulam and he said I discovered THC in 1964. Insulin was discovered in the 1920s, it was a, a year later it was on the market. I discovered THC in 1964. He goes like this. Where is it? It's because of the law. That's why it's not developed, because the law is keeping it under wraps. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to look at it. We cannot say there is trust between patient and physician when patient is hiding from doctor that he's using cannabis. Mm. So where do you think the trust was lost between patients and physicians? Probably because every medical doctor his excuse will be there hasn't been enough research. I'm not a physician, um, but I do work with a lot of people. I hear two questions from virtually everybody. How do, number one, how do I access it? And two, how much do I take? Um, now in Canada, you can access it, but how much do you take? And I often will counsel people on how much to take and they trust me because I have 20 years of experience and 50 years of using cannabis personally and I guess I know the lingo and they will trust me. I also put up a slide that says drugs should be tested on the people that make them. I would never suggest a drug to any person if I hadn't used it myself, if I didn't know what it was about. And that, that would include opiate drugs as well if I ever have to use them, but I would 
know what the experience would be like for myself and then suggest it to another person that that's the way I tick. But if you do need a physician, try to find one that has personal experience with cannabis before he recommends it to you. In Canada we have dispensaries that have a smoking room. So people buy cannabis and go into the smoking room, roll it, light it up, and pass it around to maybe 10 other people at the table that are all treating an Ill illness, whether chronic pain, epilepsy, whatever, but they're, they're sharing cannabis and they're also sharing their experience, strength, and hope um, about their illness. And those smoking rooms, I think, are tremendously therapeutic. Um, more so than just going and buying cannabis, going home and taking it by yourself, it's good to get that. Uh, contact, uh, particularly with people attempting to get through withdrawal from a, an opiate drug or crack cocaine or what, any type of drug. Um, they will go to a cannabis dispensary, smoke cannabis, talk about it. Very therapeutic.